Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, folks. Michael Zuber, one rental at a time, back with his good friend, Mr. Dan Bird. Uh, yes, folks, Dan Bird is back. He is uh, back in his house. Uh, thank you for you all. See, the my notes. walls are still standing. Yeah, walls are still standing. Uh, so, Dan, do do by us the way. Favor. By the way, a um, few people. Yeah. I did read some of the notes, and oh. people asked what what Starbucks mug I had. Oh, Charlotte. Yes. Today is go. Charlotte. There you but go. I'm going to show you a picture of all my mugs. Okay. That's cool. Uh, again, folks, we're uh, concerned about you. Obviously, last week we tried to do this. The connection wasn't good. So I, I did my best Dan Bird impersonation, which I'm sure was terrible. Uh, but I got uh, a lot of good reviews from folks. So it was nice. Yeah. Yeah. So were... do us a favor, catch us up on the hurricane. What's going on? How were you affected? All of that. And then we'll get into the market because it feels like the hurricane hit a market, hit the market. <laughs> you think? Um, let's see. How do I want to start this? Let's start with, uh, I'm actually going to use my newsletter. So this is actually the PDF of the newsletter. Okay. So for the hurricane, let's go back up here. So this was in the newsletter. This is- um, Are you sharing? Because I'm not seeing it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, hang on. I forgot how technology works here. <laughs> there you go. Oh, look at All that. Right. Woo! I am here. Wow. All right. So this is where I live right here. Here's the hurricane when it was probably about 30 minutes away from hitting. And it hit, you see this little barrier island right in here? Yep. That's Sanibel, the bottom, and Captiva at the top. Mm. So it came in and it hit right across Captiva up here. Yep. So Sanibel took the brunt of it all. Right. And then it continued, it went over and then it stopped. And then it went straight up through Punta Gorda straight up like this and then out towards Orlando. Wow. So this this hurricane was the worst case scenario of any scenario you could have. Mm. It was at, at its peak, you can see up here 155 miles per hour. At its peak, it was 157. So it was three miles per hour away from being a category five. Yeah. It's a category four when it hit. It came in 90 degrees to the coast, which you never want. Uh, I had a huge eye. You can kind of see the eye right here. Mm -hmm. When um, Hurricane Charlie hit in 2004, which is the worst one before Irma, mm -hmm. and, and Charlie came kind of in 90 degrees too. But Charlie was a really small eye. You could have fit five Charlies inside of this one. Oh, wow. That's how, that's how wide it was. So that's the, the second thing is how wide the storm was. So number one is it was almost a category five. Number two, it came in at 90 degrees. Number three, it was how wide the eye was, which means the storm and out here in the storm surge, how wide that was. Mm -hmm. It basically was moving really slow. At one point, it was moving at about eight miles per hour. Oh. It basically, when it hit the, the barrier islands, it stopped. So it just stopped here and just pounded everybody for a while and then moved, moved north. Mm -hmm. And it hit at high tide. So almost every worst case scenario for a hurricane. I mean, Irma, we had one or two of those. Charlie came in at 90 degrees. Irma kind of came in straight up the coast. Irma came in way down here at Marco and then went right up inside the coast. It wasn't out in the ocean. And Irma was a category five when it first hit. But this one had every worst case scenario that you could possibly want. And it's kind of hard for hurricanes to get into the west, the southwest side of Florida. Usually they hit the eastern side over here, sure. or they go up here in the Gulf and they hit up in the Panhandle mm. or a, a Tampa or north. It's very rare that they actually hit directly into this area. Okay. So since I was here, I didn't get any of the eye. Okay. The eye went over, by the way, my... Um, my rental property that we've talked about before on your show yeah. is in Cape Coral. Oh. So you can see where this little river is. Yeah. This is the Caloosahatchee River. Fort Myers is on the south side of that river yeah. and Cape Coral is on the north side of that river. So my house is right about there. Okay. So the eye did go over my rental property. Mm. My son was in there with his family. Oh, they stayed. They stayed, yeah. The eye went over it. The house, the structure itself was fine, but we've lost a lot of roof tiles and, and the uh, fence got blown away. Mm. Didn't get blown away. It got blown into the yard. Mm. And it was a 
poly 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 pure uh, polyethylene fence you know the plastic things yeah. the white ones sure yeah yeah so we actually i actually put it together back together the next day all the pieces were it's like pickup sticks all the pieces were over the yard so the worst part about this and for and i actually put this in the newsletter um at my house there were 90 mile per hour winds sustained that's important because it is not just a quick gust and some calm it is a consistent 90 miles per hour for eight hours without stopping. Wow. You, you really can't understand it until you've been through it. Hmm. And I was, I have these hurricane uh, shades that are see through, so we can see out during the day. We can actually see out and watch the winds and everything go by. Hmm. And my cage over my pool, everyone down here has these cage structures with screening. Hmm. A lot of people lost their screens, a lot of people, their cages just collapsed. Mine, I could watch the main, I have a big, huge, wide picture screen. Mm -hmm. The main beam that went across the top of it, I was actually watching it bounce up and down in the wind mm -hmm. for eight hours. Wow. I was sure that whole thing was going to go away, but it didn't. We didn't lose any roof tiles. We didn't lose any cage screening. Okay. Two trees kind of topple over, but I set those back up the next day. So at my house, really, there was, there was no damage. But my rental property, I've already filed a claim. Yeah. The uh, insurance companies, by the way, uh, because um, DeSantis has already got kind of lined that up ahead of time. Insurance companies have been really good. It took me 10 minutes to file the claim. They they filed it. They said, well, we'll have a, an estimator out in five days. They said normally it's one day, but because of, you know, everybody's getting them now. Uh, it'll take five days. Last time when I went through Irma, it, it took, you know, three days for the estimator to come out and it took about two weeks to get the check. Yeah. So insurance companies are actually really good at stuff like this. Oh, yeah. So that's it. I put some pictures. There's the Sanibel Causeway. Yeah. So this, this little uh, barrier island here, that's Sanibel. Yes. There's a little causeway that connects it to the mainland. Yeah, it's cut people off. People actually stayed. Some of the people that live there actually stayed. Mm. Because Irma kind of glanced to the side and went up this way. Mm -hmm. So they didn't get the brunt of it. Charlie, they did get the brunt of it, but it was very fast moving and it was a very small eye. Mm. So it didn't last very long. So a lot of people stayed because they, they got complacent, basically. So this is the this is the causeway that connects Sanibel to the mainland. Yeah. Okay. That will take years to repair, probably. Oh yeah, probably. So those people are trapped now on that island. If they survive, they're trapped over there. So they're trying to figure out how to get them off. This is Fort Myers Beach, $27 billion in damage. All these boats were just piled on top of each other like toys. Yeah. I can't believe that. I mean, these are these are million dollar boats, some of these. I can't believe people left them there. Hmm. This is um, Fort Myers Beach, which is the real tourist section for Fort Myers. This is a real little beach town. It's got beach restaurants and bars and stuff. This is the main street yeah. down Fort Myers Beach. It's basically all a beach now. Mm -hmm. Basically everything along Fort Myers Beach was wiped out. The new construction did pretty well. Just, just to give you an idea for my house, I watched them build it. So what they do is they put cinder blocks for the walls mm -hmm. all around, right? And then they knock holes out of the bottom because cinder blocks have that column through the middle. Sure. So they knock holes out of the bottom of each of those columns. They put in rebar and secure the rebar to the, to the concrete foundation. Mm. Then they put plywood back on those holes and they pour concrete in through the top. Yep. It was basically one solid concrete wall all the way up. And then they take the, um, the, the roof trusses mm -hmm. And they strap them with three straps each on each side to that concrete wall. Sure. So the trusses themselves can't go off. So the only thing that really can happen with the roof is the tiles could come off. Sure. The tiles are all cemented now too. I have the uh, kind of the uh, Tuscan Italian type styles, kind of the curved. Um, it's not the, the regular shingles like most houses around the U.S. have. None of those came off. So, I mean, the houses, the way they're built today are really good. But along Fort Myers Beach, a lot of the new houses that were built that way, the structures still stayed there. 
but the older houses, and there were a lot of older houses along there that was still in the, with the wooden construction, they are gone. They are completely gone. Yeah. They were showing video. You see some that just there was just a pool sitting there with nothing around it. Yeah, I've seen because the house is completely wiped out. Yep. So this is going to take years to to rebuild. Mm -hmm. I've heard it was like the fifth strongest hurricane to ever hit the U.S. Wow. I mean, I can think of Andrew and Katrina, maybe Harvey, a couple of other ones, mm -hmm. but it's one of the, it's probably the worst one to hit Southwest Florida. Yeah. No question. Okay. So anyway, that's the hurricane. I survived. My house is still standing. Yeah. You know what, folks, we're going to actually just call this video number one. I know a lot of you were concerned for Dan last week. Uh, we are going to stop this record number, video number two, which will be what the heck is going on with the market, the hurricane. Right. The and the destruction well. in the market, let's call it that. There you go. Uh, uh, there's also a video in here in my newsletter if you want to watch some more uh, overhead shots of what happened. Very cool. Well, Dan, I'm glad you're safe. I was checking on you. I thank you. Uh, yeah. Glad everything's good. Thank you so much. You bet.